Hello and welcome to Aging Matters. It's a program sponsored by and provided by the Berks County Area Agency on Aging. My name is Ann Bartlett. I'm the Manager of Community Outreach and Education for the agency. Our program is most appropriate for this winter evening and it is Winter Safety and Disaster Preparedness. I have with me this evening Cara Mowbray from the American Red Cross. She is the Disaster Program Manager. And as I looked at that and thought, how do you manage disaster? <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, you know, an oxymoron, sure, I guess. Sure. Um, so I thank you for being with us and representing thank the American you. Red Cross. And I, I wanted to start right in on the program tonight with, we are... Um, early still in the winter months still uh, having all kinds everything from you know just cold temperatures to uh, winds and chills to snow and rain turning to <laughs> sleet and slush and all kinds of weather that we're having this winter and I think that it's um, although we're looking for spring uh, <laughs> and, and hoping it's right around the corner we're still in, in the winter weather and so I think that uh, it's good, and I'm glad that you're able to provide some good winter safety tips for everyone, uh, particularly focused on seniors, but for everyone, I'm sure. So thank you, Kara. Absolutely. Thank you for, for having me. Um, we appreciate and love to be able to come out to talk about preparedness. And what's so nice about preparedness is it prepares you for not only for winter, but for all different aspects of different disasters that happen. But um, certainly winter is uh, before us now, and certainly we've had some Luckily, fairly, although cold weather, it's been fairly mild in terms of the snow, mm -hmm. but it is still February, so <laughs> there's a lot of the months exactly. to go, and, and even through March still. So mm -hmm. um, it's a great opportunity for us to talk a little bit about um, some of the tips that we, we really want to see people take in their, in their home. And, and we just want everybody to be safe. Absolutely. And that's, that's the key. So let's start with um, some of the, the basic winter safety tips for us that you know, we may have gotten slack in or just forget about. So where would you sure. like to start with some of those? So for the us? first thing I'd actually like to start with is the difference between a winter watch and a winter oh, okay. warning. Right. Um, because I think when people hear that on TV, that really will start to get them thinking and geared up to mm -hmm. know how to be best prepare. Okay. So a watcher looking at the storm conditions possibly within 36 to 48 hours. So at that point, you know it's probably going to be coming an advisory has already happened, whereas then um, a warning you have you know severe conditions are going to begin so when that happens um, you certainly want to start taking precautions so okay. I would say heating your home okay. is one of the big pieces that we look at so um, a big cause for us that we see when we have fires in the home um, are things other than space heaters so um, people having candles lit you know if you mm -hmm. do have a candle lit please make sure that it's you're close by you're watching it it's being monitored um, do not use anything other than um, either your heater or space heater to heat the home so don't turn on your stove don't open your oven um, certainly um, having any sort of um, generator indoors that which can cause carbon monoxide um, we don't want that of course mm -hmm. at all mm -hmm. if you do have a space heater to make sure that the items are at least three feet away from it okay. um, they make some great space heaters now that if um, it falls over that it automatically shuts off good, good. or there's timered ones that can um, you can put on a timer to make sure that they are shut off well and one of the things as you're talking about like the space heaters I think that that's great if I'm Unfortunately, what happens, I, th I think, if I'm looking at a senior citizen, they may have had the space heater for a good number of years. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that may not be that they're ready to purchase a new one with sure. those devices, which sure. is excellent. I'm glad they've come out with that. But you have some folks who've had something. So even in, in that case, there's probably some precautions Sure. You consider. just want to make sure that it is on a flat surface okay. um, and that... Um, as I said, that, that there's not, nothing around it that can catch. So just make sure that you're not throwing some a piece of clothing mm -hmm. over it or a blanket. Um, just make sure that it is standalone and, um, and it's on a flat surface. And I think so. in good condition. And obviously yes. that, that the cords aren't frayed. Frayed, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. That's and I think and I, something else I, I, I read as I was l researching for tonight's program, also 
the idea of making sure that it's plugged directly into the outlet versus a, a, a strip or on something else that may not be safe. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Sure. All right. <laughs> and going back to the candles, you know, it's so, you know, we create the atmosphere sure. or it's nice to have candlelight, but with that subdued lighting, it is also very easy to fall asleep. Absolutely. When that's on. So, yes, Absolutely. if we can. Um, we try and say to avoid candles mm -hmm. um, just because of the hazards that it can, can bring on. Um, but if, if you do have one lit, then please make sure that it's close by near you. You know um, that it's in a container okay. um, that um, mm -hmm. would be able to burn out then versus a stick or something that could easily knock over. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, you would never know what could happen. That, that certainly is a problem. And we can also look at, I guess, some of the other things that are out there today are the candles that are flameless. Yes, absolutely. So that might be a nice <laughs> choice. An ambiance for <laughs> yes. creating that ambiance without risk. the danger. Yes. <laughs> okay, good. So what else? We've got some the candle issues, the space heater issues. What else in a home? So, you know, I think we when we talk about keeping warm, it's just keeping layers on, keeping okay. blankets um, with you. I think that would be important. Um, I know I do myself when I'm just sitting. You tend to get cold, mm -hmm. so it's great to have those layers and keep layered up. Um, if the electric does go out for some reason, and um, you know you want to make sure everything stays closed um, I think okay. people especially are worried about their food in the refrigerator mm -hmm. and their freezer mm -hmm. um, but even if it does go out food um, can keep in the refrigerator without opening the door for a good at least four hours um, freezers can stay because they're packed typically and they're colder about 48 hours so we so shouldn't keep looking make sure don't it's keep still looking okay. <laughs> keep it keep it closed mm -hmm. um, and make sure that you best prepare by getting um, non-perishable foods or getting um, something that you can open with a can opener um, and you're not worried to have to actually cook the meal mm -hmm. um, that you can just have on hand. And I guess one of the other things that you mentioned earlier is that with the differences with the watch and the warning. Mm -hmm. So if we're having that period of time of that extra 36 to 48 you know, hours sure. where we're going, okay, here it's coming that's the time yes. to go out and purchase those items that we can keep in case that should happen as opposed to when it gets a little closer and we're expecting it to come today. Absolutely, right? absolutely, okay. yes, definitely. Um, yes, there's there's always little pieces um, that you can best prepare for ahead of time, um, and it's just making sure you're keeping up with the weather, know what's happening. Um, of course, anything can happen and take mm -hmm. a turn at any last minute, so um, making sure that you know, even a portable radio, and, and we'll get into okay. certainly other items that you'd want to have um, to be prepared, but um, a, a battery hand cranked radio, something that um, you're not relying on electricity necessarily, because again, so often um, snow can bring down branches, which can bring down the wires, mm -hmm. and, and people are out of electric for, for a while. So um, something that is battery or hand operated would be best because you're still able to then keep that touch with what's going on in the media and what's okay. happening. And, um, you know, if it is um, safe to go out, sometimes at that point, especially if it's in the middle of a storm, you know, you want to be able to stay in your home and not mm -hmm. necessarily go mm -hmm. out. Um, if you do, you know, there are certain, certain um, driving tips that you, we encourage people to, to do and to even have in their car oh, okay. items such as a blanket, for example. Mm -hmm. So if you get stuck and you have to wait until emergency personnel can get there, you have something to, you're able to get out and keep you warm, which is very important. Um, certainly, you know, when salt trucks are going by, not to go around salt trucks. Um, some of it's just um, making sure your gas tank is filled as well, making sure you have... <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> <laughs> I, and we all do it. It all happens. Okay. But something, <laughs> something, alone, especially <laughs> with the winter months, you want to make sure mm -hmm. that's you're prepared for that. So if you're going out, um, you know where you're traveling to. So you're paying attention to the road signs good, and, good and how thinking. to get there. We might know what it looks like here, but we have to remember what it what does it look like weather wise where we're absolutely, going. Absolutely, okay? absolutely, mm -hmm. and um, you know just make sure you're giving yourself enough time to um, you know especially when it's snowing or when the roads are a little icy, mm -hmm. traffic's going to be backed up. People are going to be driving slower, so make sure you give yourself enough time for that travel as okay. well. So. Alrighty, and I guess in particular for seniors, if you um, don't have 
to go out, as you said, you know, don't. Mm -hmm. Stay home. We want you to be safe in your home um, and don't go out because you might need this or, you know, if it's an essential situation that you absolutely need to get there, it's a treatment, it's, you know, a specific thing that you need to go out. Otherwise, try and reschedule those things, sure. try and stay home and Absolutely. stay in contact with others. That's what mm -hmm. we, we definitely say, and especially um, with the preparedness, is making sure you have a contact um, that's outside the home. So it could be a family member, it could be a friend, a neighbor, but that they're aware um, and they can check in or you can check in with them um, just throughout the time just to make sure you're okay if you need anything, um, especially if somebody is able to get around a little more easy, easier um, and able to help, that would be a huge asset mm -hmm, to be definitely. able to Definitely. I think that, that connection is really important. But yes. again, I get back to particularly seniors when they may be living alone. Um, you know, family may or may, may or may not be in the area, but they can at least keep in touch. Definitely. They might be able to identify another neighbor they mm -hmm. can keep in touch with or a good friend that 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 connection really says you're still okay, you're safe. Absolutely. That's Absolutely, great. Absolutely, yes. Um, I guess we should, anything else in terms of staying in our home and being, being safe in our home before we move on to then, uh, you know, that's kind of the winter. What other winter safety tips before we go on to winter, I think? We read about disasters with the flooding of the snow melting or some of the fires and floods, and we want to talk about being prepared for emergencies, whether they're winter or summer. Sure. Anything else before we move on? Another um, tip or just, two? I would say, um, just to avoid frozen pipes, you know, run okay. the water um, every now and then. That would be um, in your home, um, just to make sure our pipes don't freeze and burst. Um, hmm. it, this kind of goes back to the candle situation, but if you have a fireplace, and you light a fire in your fireplace, mm -hmm. make sure there's a screen on there. Um, and the last tip I would have is if you have a pet um, and a dog that you let out, for example, obviously make sure that you're there close by. You mm -hmm. can let them in. So um, pets, yes. are, pets are our family, pets are and we want to we wanna <laughs> make sure that they're safe and um, aren't out in the, in the elements. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So uh, looking at that and moving forward with, you know, we also think of, you know, we read in the newspaper, it's not about the, the fires and the relocation of folks with fires and disasters and flooding. Um, if you can, before we talk about being prepared for those, and as we read, I'd like to bring it home to Berks County. Mm -hmm. um, can you share some statistics with us? You know, some sure, recent stats sure. on uh, you know the the disaster situation in Absolutely. Berks County. So Berks County last year we had 55 fires that we actually went out to. Um, so a lot were around in the city of Reading, but we did ha certainly respond out to other areas in Berks. Um, and the way um, we're actually set up in our um, in the northeast section of Pennsylvania, so um, in our old county region, we had 16 counties, we responded to over 600 fires. Wow. So uh, fires are extremely prevalent, they happen. Um, and we really encourage people to be prepared to have, if you rent, to have renter's insurance. Um, that is the, one of the number one pieces that we see, especially within the city. Um, mm -hmm. You know, even if your home is paid off, make sure you have some sort of insurance on it. Um, we cannot stress that enough um, mm -hmm. in terms of preparedness. And, and so often, unfortunately, we see that people drop their insurance or don't pick up renter's insurance. Um, so it is, it's, fires are our number one. Okay. For, um, disaster that we actually respond to in Berks County. So it's it's incredible um, and it's certainly when we go out and we have volunteers go out to help our clients, um, it, it definitely hits home and, and then mm -hmm. making us more aware that we need to prepare the community. We want to get that word out to make sure that um, people are prepared. Um, so you know, whether it's cooking um, and you're at home cooking to make sure you're not leaving the room when you're, you have something. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. probably a huge cause of a lot of fires. Oh, okay. um, somebody having oil on the stove or just turning away and walking out of the room for one minute and it goes up. Yeah. Um, it's incredible. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I think that in, in terms of being prepared, as you said, it's so important to be prepared at the ground route with the, those insurances and whatnot, but also you never want it to happen to you, obviously. You never want to be in that situation. Some of it, you know, it happens that quickly mm -hmm. and that unexpectedly that 
we say we, we should be prepared. You sure. know, we all say, yes, I need to think about that and what are some of the things I should have, but we really need to take the next step. And uh, you have some things with us tonight to share, to actually put together, to, to yes. think about and, and make the first step in preparing an emergency kit, mm -hmm. right? Yes. That's what you're calling yes, that. Yes, absolutely. Well, then why don't, can you share some of the sure. things with us? Sure. So we, we talk about an emergency preparedness kit and what to, what to have um, in your home. So we like to say start with a three-day three -day kit. Um, you can have more supplies or less supplies, um, but something that you can have in your home if the electric goes out, if you're stuck at home, or even if you need to um, be evacuated and you need to leave. Okay. So there are certain items. Um, there obviously emergency preparedness kits are on the market. You can purchase them. However, we say so many people have a lot of these items at in their own home. Something as simple as a flashlight. Mm -hmm. um, flashlights, you know, I think a lot of people have them around um, batteries and, and I always say this because you know you have the flashlight right do you have, have the, the batteries, batteries. <laughs> yes make sure that whatever flashlight batteries are required that it the the batteries fit so if it's um, C's D's or, or um, you know A's um, make sure you know what it is um, same with um, you know first day kit um, even if it's not necessarily a kit but you have some uh -huh. Band-Aids, you have some gauze pads, you have things that can be um, put together in, in that way. And, and things that go with that, I guess you don't think about, like if you have a wrap or a gauze pad, do you need, you need the tape, you need the scissors maybe mm -hmm. to cut it off or, or sure, something. Sure, sure, okay. yeah. Are those typical, those small items typical because you have small cuts you don't need major slings and sure <laughs> yes I, I would say a small first aid kit okay. is is fine okay. um anything larger you may want to um call for emergency personnel <laughs> so just um keep that in mind okay, as well good. but um, if, uh, water, um, you know, you want to make sure you have three days supply of water for each person in the home. Um, again, um, non-perishable food or canned food items, um, those would be great. Even something simple as gloves, um, you know, something that we don't, wouldn't necessarily think about, but um, mm -hmm. is in case you need to clear debris or there's something outside that you need to get to. Um, having just a pair of work gloves or a okay. pair of gloves that are a little thicker it doesn't have to be necessarily be work gloves, but okay. something like that would be good. Um, another example that they have in here is um, a poncho, for example. So something that you may need to go out in in the mm -hmm. if it's raining, if it's storming. Mm -hmm. um, so some sort of emergency emergency poncho. And certainly here. that's you know very folded, very thin, and and very yep. uh, available. In the Absolutely. Community. There's um, you know we talk about having tarps and other things, but. Some of those items, what I typically say is, um, you know, you can go to the dollar store mm -hmm. if you don't have them. Mm -hmm. um, the dollar store has a lot of great um, items that are obviously purchased for a dollar or less or at least around that. Mm -hmm. um, you can even get some tablecloths and use them as uh, some sort of light tarp, um, knowing that, you know, depending what you're using it for, but it, it does its purpose. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a, an effective... Um, but economical way of doing it and not necessarily have to, having to spend $100 for, for a kit. And going back, if you could just give examples, we say non-perishable food items, sure. um, but we don't have to go out and get, you know, these packed, you know, those, those sealed packed kinds of things, right? Sure. We can no, just get absolutely some. absolutely not. Um, now, certainly if you get canned food, if it doesn't have the pull top, you want to make sure you have a can opener and not a, a can opener. <laughs> a manual one that's not, that's not, Oops. you don't have to rely on the electric, exactly. Um, so that's, a, again, something you can get at the dollar store, an easy um, a can opener. Um, but any sort of, um, like even vegetables or um, 
fruit. Um, okay. There's a lot of the fruit cups now that you can have to mm, get yes. a variety okay. of things that um, aren't necessarily bad or packed with sodium. Mm -hmm. And peanut butter. Peanut butter, yep, absolutely. Tuna. And I, we need utensils too, don't we? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. You can, you can pack away um, uh, plastic wear in mm -hmm. there if you want, um, or just to have, if you're in your home, you okay. certainly can use your own, so. And you have a nice um, bag. You have, uh, it, you know, uh, definitely says emergency preparedness Red Cross bag. Sure. Um, but again, that's we don't have to have that per se. No, right? absolutely not. Although you do have that available. So um, th this is available on the Red Cross um, dot org site. So okay. um, this this is an available for purchase. Um, however, anybody can use whatever they want. So if they have their own backpack or a duffel bag, just make sure you remember what bag it is <laughs> okay. and you keep it mark in it. it. Mark it, yes. Okay. Um, to mark the bag and you keep it in an area that is able to, you're able to get to. So so often, and I know I have a bad habit of this too. We collect stuff mm -hmm. and. The next thing you know, you, it's in the bottom of your closet and you have everything piled on uh -huh. top of it. Right. So just make sure it's in an area that you can get to it, that um, you know where it is, you remember what you, you have in there. Um, even keeping a list of contents is good. Um, so we say um, any paperwork, um, um, any medications, so list of medications, especially if you have to go to a shelter um, or you have to leave in the middle of the night. Often we don't think about what our medications are or mm -hmm. um, having copies of important paperwork and documents. And we don't think about it until we're ready to take it maybe the next morning you know with our breakfast and we go uh oh we don't have that so exactly. keep the list and some extra medications in that exactly okay. yes what other lists are there other um, things that we should be carrying with us if we have to um, leave for some reason and we grab a backpack or any other thing and I can sling that on my shoulder. What other, you mentioned papers and documents, are there other important things that we should consider or have prepared to take well, with us? Well, everybody's a little different and going to pack their emergency preparedness kit um, or their um, to-go kit a little differently, but we always say if there's copies of some photos, for example, or something that you can take with you, especially if you're evacuated and have to go to a shelter, you want some comfort from home. So to mm -hmm. have some pictures of your family um, with you, that might be something that you want to um, have extra copies of. To have a book, something that passes the time. Okay. Um, and it may just be some trinkets, you know, for children it may mm. be a stuffed animal, for example. Mm -hmm. um, but there are, there's things that mean something different for each person and we say, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, pack your emergency preparedness kit for that. Um, you know, what would think about what you would want if you say we're away on vacation. So, what items would you need? You know, we always say maybe keep an extra pair of clothes in it. So, mm -hmm. if again, if you have to pick up and leave in the middle of the night, you pick it up and and mm -hmm. you just go with mm -hmm. it. Um, so, having some extra clothes would probably be a good idea. Um, we do have. Um, on the uh, Red Cross website, or even if somebody calls into the chapter, some examples of lists of things that people should oh, have okay. um, in their bags. But, okay. you know, I would say think of it as if you're going away. So you're packing for that. So mm -hmm. when you're a little, um, you're in a situation where, you know, you have the time to think about it now. Um, and so you're not necessarily then forgetting when it comes last minute or you have to suddenly leave your home. Oh, and, make, and sit down, as you said, while you can and make that list so then you can check off <clears throat> and get what it is that you've put on that list and put it in your pack. And I think today some of the younger folks have a lot of it on their phones. Absolutely. They have all the contacts. Some of our older citizens do not have sure. those phones, so they might need to make sure they've got a list of phone numbers and names yes. of folks that they can reach once they've had, when they've left their home and had to be somewhere absolutely. else. We absolutely mm -hmm. say have a list of emergency contacts, um, like your doctors um, and like uh, a family member, somebody that um, if you can't think of their number or who they are mm -hmm. um, off the top right. of your head, you then have that piece of paper right. to be able to refer to. And, and one last thing for the kit to make sure that those papers because they're paper sure. and can get wet in the flood or whatever, sure. that they're in some kind of plastic sealed bag, a baggy 
perhaps would work? Absolutely. Okay. Um, you know, it, it can be put in some sort of envelope, but ev yes, if you want to put it in, you know, one of the gallon zip bags, mm -hmm. that can mm -hmm. go in there, um, anything okay. like that, yes. Sure. Um, in the few minutes we have left, Kara, let's, uh, we, we, we mentioned earlier that pets, you were sure. talking about how they're, you know, they are family, so Absolutely. quick tip on kind of pets and the preparedness issue. So pets are, are part of our home. You, you want to think about their medications. You want to think about their vet. Um, that's something that you want to have okay. on the list as well. So just make sure that you have some food for them, that you have okay. water for them as well. Um, so not only for you and your family, but for, for your pets. So um, there, again, um, we have some great checklists that are um, at the chapter that lists what you should have for pets and disasters, for winter safety, for all the different disasters that um, we see here in Berks County or even beyond. That's, so. that's great. That's wonderful because, again, you can take those lists and really look at it ahead of time. Absolutely. And sit, as you said, and kind of say, okay, mm -hmm. does this apply to me or does it not? And, sure. and, and then go from there. Um, what I'd like to do real quick then is let's put up on the screen, if we can, we have Red Cross's logo and phone number and the site. And, and what we can get from that, Kara? Sure. Um, so please, you can visit www.redcross.org. Um, that has information, um, all our checklist preparedness information, the preparedness kit. Or you can call the number below, 610-375-4383. That is the Berks County chapter number. And we're more than happy to assist as well. Great. And in closing, um, I, I want to make sure that you have any last words for us for winter safety or emergency preparedness, or I think you also can do some programs like this for other groups that might be interested. Absolutely. We are happy to come out to any group to do a preparedness presentation. We actually have a great preparedness senior presentation that we do um, for different senior groups. So it's, it's a great opportunity for us to get the community more prepared. Okay. Any anything else you'd like to share with um, us? Just for everybody to to visit the website or to call the chapter if they want more information on being prepared. Great. Thank you. I I think we've learned a lot uh, this evening, and I appreciate your time and sharing this information with us. Remember, you can go to the Red Cross um, website or call them for those tips or for more information about preparedness winter safety issues, or just uh, anything maybe to even help out as a volunteer in Absolutely. terms of disasters. And we didn't even get to do that tonight. But uh, again, thank you, Kara, and thank you for being with us this evening.